Right then, uh, so somewhat alarmingly, the game seems to be crashing more and more... Well, it seems to be crashing sooner, which is something of a problem. Yes, very much something of a problem. As, um, it used to be like every 30 odd minutes, now um, that last episode ended at about 19 minutes, so yeah. Hopefully it is not a sign of things to come. Okay, so we'll save once more and we shall continue. Um, right then. So yes, Warsaw. What should we do with Warsaw? There's hardly a garrison in it, so I think what I might, well, may do is, uh, wait for my third army to arrive in Warsaw and then I think we're about, uh, 250 at minimum men be able to assault the city. We'll probably have something in the region of 270,000 men, maybe 280 at most. But that should be more than sufficient to uh, take the city of Warsaw. The Russians, I think they would take a river crossing penalty, so we'll have to see. I do love rivers. It's amazing how rivers have shaped warfare. You would not think it, but basically, blood, well, I mean, bloody hell, rivers have definitely had a massive impact on, like, just the development of mankind. It's just, <laughs> it's just bloody crazy. Trying to think now. I think um, when I uh, was on holiday in America for some time ago, actually, uh, when we drove through, well, basically me and family, uh, we drove from Orlando uh, into New Orleans. I was actually in New Orleans the uh, night before Katrina hit, well, the hurricane Katrina hit, so that was nice. Uh, I say nice sarcastically, though I did enjoy some really beautiful duck in the French sector, so that was lovely. But yes, um, I remember seeing the uh, Mississippi River, and holy shit, that thing's huge! It's almost terrifying when you see something like that. The the size and the scale of the rivers is just unbelievable. Oh yeah, that's uh, my little tidbit of um, personal information there. Right, so the French actually decided to bombard the Turkish uh, fortresses at Dar uh, well at the Dardanelles. I can't say that's a wise strategy. Okay, so what was that about? A 123 combat strength force under the Brutalov, perhaps? I'm not entirely sure, actually. I didn't get quite enough time to look at it. Okay. Not gaining or losing any morale. That's a little bit, uh... And settle in. Oh, yes, please. We have our breakthrough. Did Oh, right, yes, and we have our reserve call. Fantastic. Ah. And we have our supplies. Well, everything's coming up Millhouse. Okay, well, you can go in here then, so that's fantastic. And um, I'll give these munitions to each of these armies. I mean, I should really give them to uh, the army with the most heavy guns, but oh well. Now, these heavy guns do have some experience. That's pretty interesting. How much experience do they have? Um, so, they are uh, three stars. Now, that's interesting. Okay. Now, the Russians are taking some damage over here. Um, of course, we are active due to the fact that the mod is always active. My god, we, we have a lot of combat strength here. Ah... We do with a leader over here. Well, I do have those um, generals upcoming, don't I? So let's take a look here. So we have a uh, Fair du well, Battalion Tactician. Fair du Battalion. I'm not exactly sure how you say it. Improvised Fenders. Wow, that's really nice, actually. And he is a good administrator. 15% fatigue recovery. That's pretty damn good. Ooh. Plus one command point and plus one additional command point per ability level above one. To any stack he commands. Okay. He's also an open open order tactician. We have an open order tactician and a hard catch. Uh Fado Battalion Loyal. That's nice. Hmm. 312, 412, that's not bad. A 411. Um 
We'll send the 412 actually. I'll send these other commanders as well. There we go, so they'll be there in 12 days, but at least we'll have some extra commanders. Who is our best offensive general? Let's take a look. Right, strategic free, so he's terrible at offensive. Two, two, three, zero, two. So he's our best offensive general. So I'll have to give him some uh, extra forces, I think. I may, I think I'll give him the heavy artillery. And some extra munitions. There we go. And we'll have you on assault. There we go. Okay. And we can recruit some extra men. So I'm going to recruit some men over here. They'll be able to form a garrison over here. Uh, this force, I I need to deal with these uh, Serbians. Um, I can leave behind this to garrison Belgrade. I said leave it behind. There we go. Defend, yep, there we go. Lovely jubbly. 14 days is a long time though. Or do we want to do that or do we want to push forwards? I think we kind of do want to push forwards. If we can capture more and more towns, then at least we can try and deny Serbia any uh, income and that sort of thing. Okay, so we do capture this town. We're about two days out from Quill. Um, what is in Kuel actually? 143. Ooh, not good. Right, well, while I'm here, I can start to destroy rails. So we'll move along up here then. If we can make it to Pinsk, at least we can destroy the rails over there as well. Okay, okay. Right, that force is moving. They'll be there soon enough. Tell them to enter into Ingrod. Okay. Uh, we have this as well. So they will go past some regulars. Okay, these men will be ready in 32 days. God damn. Ah, well, at least this core will be ready soon. Um. Okay, we'll improve our military control over here. Okay. Now we have a lot of war supply. Let's check on our uh, war production, so shall we? Hmm. We have zero in reserve, so I think I'm going to build up my reserve there by three. Okay, so we'll go ahead to the next turn. I've been playing Rise of Prussia uh, recently as well, actually. Rise of Prussia. It's um actually a game set in the uh, Seven Years' War, the War of Austrian Succession, that sort of period. It's really good. It's really good. I'd love to be able to learn to play it, but it's just the problem is that it's one of the older gods. And they're... <sighs> They're brilliant, don't get me wrong, it's just the fact that you can't see the combat power displayed, and that really makes it difficult for me. Because, I mean, like here, we can see that force uh, near Warsaw is about 994 strength. You can, you can work out what you're going against, but it's hell of a lot harder in the older geods. I mean, it does definitely simulate the fact that uh, you wouldn't know how strong a force is, of course, but, I mean... <sighs> I think it's just the fact that we, um, well, obviously there's better reconnaissance in these games, obviously due to the fact of reconnaissance planes. But yes, it's just trying to estimate, really, trying to just have a good guess at what you could be facing. So, yeah, I mean, I'll probably get around to playing it. I'll probably just have to keep practicing with uh, Rise of Prussia until I get to it. Uh, then, uh, probably once I get to a point where I feel comfortable with Rise of Prussia, I will probably do a session, well, a um, full series of Rise of Prussia, which could be interesting. I mean, uh, who do we want to play? I mean, there's the Austrian-led coalition, which is basically Austria, France at some point, actually. Um, perhaps Russia, too? And Sweden, and... Um, who else was it? Somebody else. I can't remember who else it was. And then there's the Prussian... 
led forces with uh, Friedrich the Great or Frederick the Great. Which is interesting, really. I'll have to take a look at it, actually. I'll have to make a point to try to learn it. But the thing is, with the Wars of Napoleon coming soon, we'll have that play. And holy shit, 300, wow, 3,190 strength. Yeah, we, uh, we definitely have the strength to take this, I would say. Right, I don't have any bloody offensive plans, and that annoys me. Call reserves, ah. Uh... Increases the type vials. We'll go for increase the type vials then. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second bottle of uh, Warsaw. 12 strength. Oh dear. I feel bad for them. 12 man. Oh dear. Well, I do believe we've taken Warsaw. Oh dear. God damn it, looks like the Germans were sending, uh, what was it, 6,078 combat strength force north into Belgium. Ooh, I feel bad for the Belgians. That's gonna be painful. Okay, we broke the rail at Stara. The uh, okay. Vigenka. Star of Vigenka. I don't get time to actually read it. Yeah, it looks like Star uh, Vigenka. Okay, so at least we broke the rail there. And the game didn't crash. Fantastic. And we're uh, obviously now into 1915. Uh, Matahari. So basically, the spies. Uanuzi. Italy moves sem well 10% towards the Entente. Now I'm going to let this happen, to be honest. I'm going to let it happen. Uh, they've got to be 80% then to join the Triple Entente. Yeah, still only this one diplomat over here then. Oh, well, fair enough. We have an entrenchment level of 5? Oh? Right, so we've scored some national morale from taking Warsaw, so that's great. Hmm. And we captured 274 supply crates, fantastic. It's interesting that Konrad von Hossendorf is congratulated for all these victories. War weariness to stop in public willingness to remain in the war, plus 5 war weariness. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Interesting that he's uh, gained an entrenchment level of 5. That's some pretty impressive entrenchment levels. Okay. That to form a new force over here. Um, I really do want to get these men over here. So if we try and invade combat and try and move through. Yeah, we can't move by rail due to the bloody fact they control the territory there. But I do need to get past them. Right, so we capture the magazine and we capture some extra supplies. Fantastic. So Warsaw is now ours. There we go, that's a nice high value objective right there. Okay. Now I need to consolidate. I need to um, consolidate over here in the east. So we can send this main offensive army down here. Who is the best defensive general? That man right there. So this third army will use basically to clean up Poland. This force will head the defense of Warsaw. Give them the magazines, maybe. Well, no, they won't be able to actually. So I'll tell them to enter. And you can build a depot here. 
how many supplies do we produce over in Warsaw? We produce about 274 at the moment. I could do with destroying this uh, supply depot over here as well. It would suck if they were to gain control of that. So, yep, fair enough. Okay, so we've... Um... Okay, that's some very undecisive weather. 7,921. God damn. Have they actually captured Dijon? They've actually captured Dijon. Uh, Dijon. Dijon. Oh, that's interesting. And they broke the rails over here, so these French forces can't get over here easily. I mean, 869 strength, that's a good amount of strength. I mean, if they were somehow able to uh, get north. But then again, they don't even need to go north. They could cause some real damage down here. Taking Lyon, saint Antoine, Saint-Antoine, saint Antoine, uh, clermont Ferrand, uh, Le Munges, uh, I can't say French for shit. Actually, I had um, I had a relative who lived in Avignon, actually, so that's pretty nice to see Avignon. Beautiful place. Avignon is absolutely out of this world beautiful. Okay. Um, Hindenburg, the Hammer of the East himself. So how is lo uh, Russia looking with this uh, national map? Whoops, I accidentally clicked off it there. They are at 97, so they haven't taken much of a notice of their war losses so far. We're doing the best so far on losses overall. I imagine most of this has probably been from uh, prisoners being taken. Right, who do we have over here? That's a new general. I think. Well, at least he can lead these men. Right, so we have some conscripts over here. We have a lot more war supply than I was anticipated. Huh. Oh, hello. Grand Offensive. A Grand Offensive may be launched against any trench, fort, or city of size 4 or higher. The target becomes a 10 point objective for your nation. Plus 10 national morale if you capture it. But minus 1 national morale for each turn it remains in enemy's hands. Basically. <laughs> okay, well. Oh, I like how that's counted as an objective. Hmm. That's really a nice idea, that. It should be definitely factored into the game eventually. I think we may call a grand offensive against Brasilitovsk, actually. And they repaired that. God damn it. They don't have... Well, they don't actually have much here. I need to try and keep moving. I mean, they're only cavalry. It's obviously worth a bit, but oh well. Um, uh, I think we'll advance on Dub now. How many supplies do we have? Well, we have a good amount of supplies. We also have some munitions. We also have some reconnaissance planes. So we're not going to be in the dark on that front. Okay, so we've seen more Serbian forces approaching us from over here. Which territory am I in? Oh, I'm already over here, okay. Regular, regular, yep, okay. Uh, so they should be able to deal with those forces, no problemo. I'll keep producing some uh, replacements now. How much does it cost me? 39 funds and 150 recruits, god damn. That cost me officers, so do I... Are these basically my... Yeah, Austri uh, officers slash elite. Let's just get some uh, replacements in here or something. As much as I can. Which is not that much, really. Kind of scraping the barrel on conscripts at the moment. Yeah, I need to take over this train. But we have achieved our objective of Warsaw, so that's uh, pretty important. So we have under our control Lublin, Ingrlod, Lodz, and Warsaw. So, uh, most of the big objectives close to us now. So we just need to concentrate on taking Brussels to Borsk. So if we called a Grand Offensive against Brest of Vosk, we could turn this city into a 16-point objective. Which would definitely deal a uh, nice blow to the Russians. It wouldn't hurt them too much other than their 6th national morale. Unless it's counted as 16 then. Not entirely sure. We'll have to see how that turns out. I'm... Oh, I do have an extra... Yeah, I do have these guys, don't I? Uh, that's two. Okay, how about if I take this artillery out of here and put this in here? 
There we go. We get another few thousand men in here, so we have about 133,000 men. We can put some artillery back in. There we go. 133,000 uh, men, 444, with uh, 306 cannon. So that should be more than sufficient. So we'll save here. And we shall advance. Yes, and um, speaking of games, once more, I have uh, oper no, what is it? Deci decisive campaigns, Operation Barbarossa. I do need to learn how to play that one. It's fantastic so far. It's really interesting premise. Basically, you play the role of a army general. You're not uh, the top of the league. You're not the top dog. You're in the hierarchy. You are over people, but you're under people as well. So what you basically have to do is make these decisions. Um, say I was playing last night and I had to decide if I wanted to stall the invasion of Russia in order to try and capture a train with 2,000 uh, barrels of oil. And uh, there's all these different outcomes and it affects relations with other generals and etc. It's really interesting and uh, playing the German side, at the start you can choose Hitler's plan or a plan that he kind of favours or one which is basically military independence where uh, the objectives are decided by the military and basically it pisses Hitler off and it's like you receive no support or practically no support from the Führer whereas if you went for his objectives then you would get a hell of a lot more resources, fuel and etc 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 but then again you would have the uh, Führer intervening in the campaign basically saying I want this objective and if you don't take it then he gets pissed off so yeah really interesting uh, well, if you uh, go for the military only from the start, you don't really get any uh, Führer intervention, so you kind of get control of the campaign yourself to a degree. <laughs> okay, hopefully it does not crash. I would like to be able to get more than two turns into a session. <laughs> uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see if it's on the cards. Right, I'm noting that that army of Warsaw is now dug into level five. That's confusing. Very confusing. I do love the fact that the Germans have now suddenly decided, oh shit, we're actually going for the sleeping plan. We probably should have done something about it. That army at Dijon should be interesting. It's going to be difficult to beat. Hmm. I'm confused as to where those bombardments are coming from. Okay. Um, so we have been driven from the yeah. Handedly. I need to research cavalry a hell of a lot more in this game. I've just been thinking that basically that cavalry division, well that cavalry corps has a power ration over a hundred. Well there's only about two thousand of them, which is equivalent to like what, eighteen thousand infantrymen? So they must have some benefits, maybe something to do with their evasion, maybe they have uh, much better assault combat, well assault stats, which would make sense. Uh, the way research works in the Two End All War series is basically your units don't really gain attack, they gain defense more than anything. Okay. So we're still being besieged down there. Um, I don't think we actually had any battle, did we? 
no. I dare not risk sending the fleet into here in case they are captured, so I'll send them back to their home port. I don't think we saw any battle over here either. Okay, so we can advance over here. Um, take that supply depot, take that, and then uh, we can make our way down here, perhaps relieve this army, well, this uh, city. These forces will take some time, a couple turns before they're ready. Okay. Fort guns have unleashed a barrage of the enemy naval vessels in the Dardanelles. Uh, so what are the Turks doing? Not really anything, actually. I do hope the AI is working. I'll have to check on that one later. Hmm. Ah, oh, right, we're on our way over here. Okay, we have a lot of leads now. Okay, just head back into our tow tree. Okay. Right then, so things are moving in the right direction. Though I do need to experiment with this AI. I really don't know if it's working properly, and I don't know if it's a good idea to carry on with the campaign if the AI doesn't work properly. So, uh, we'll have to see, we'll have to see. And uh, I did mention that I'd like to do more than two turns a session, but uh, I really don't have the time at the moment, actually, so I think, <laughs> yeah, I'll have to go back to my words. Technically, I've done three turns. Technically, so. Technicality, I've done good. So, uh, thank you guys for watching so far, and I hope to see you again in the future. And to all the people who suddenly subscribed to me last night, then uh, welcome. I'm surprised. It's uh, quite unbelievable for me to even have the amount of subscribers I do already, so more the merrier, basically. More the merrier. So thank you all once again, and I hope to see you in the future. So uh, goodbye, ladies and gentlemen of the Empire. Until next time.